thought it was N U N and it was N O N E. Casey and I always we Casey Kirschman. We always doubled a lot. We we uh, went to grade school together and lived a couple blocks apart. And Casey would always come down and pick me up. We would go on these double dates. And my mother, who was uh, probably well, one of the most devout Catholics I knew, would always give me one thing to do before I left. She handed me a rosary. And she would say, now, you two can say the rosary before you go pick your dates up. And I know you did that every single time, right? Well, this is the sad part. Huh? Mom, I hope you're not listening. Uh, so we would get in the car, and Casey would look at me, and I'd look at him, and he'd say, okay, one, two, three, the rosary. And that's what we did. And so when I got home, of course, Mom would always say, I'd hand her back her rosary, and she'd say, did you say the rosary? I said, yes, ma'am, we said the rosary. Good for you. Terrible. So you, no, I think that's great. You were very truthful. And you, uh, see, I was wondering, you, you, when you told me this off camera, I was wondering how the rosary went for the day. Is it a sin to kiss a girl if you have a rosary in your pocket that your mother gave you to keep you from kissing that girl? No, you can you, you hang it on the uh, mirror. Well, well, that's the story. The, no, Mom, it's okay. He's he's got man now. Casey, it's okay too. I know you're up there too. You're probably laughing about it. All right, thank you. All right. Anything that went on in high school that you remember you'd like to share? You know, the, we don't want to we don't want to send anybody to jail or anything. So we want you to keep it, you know, stuff that we can. That's it. What did I know about high school? I was in English class. To follow it on. Okay. I'm trying to answer a question, and somebody behind me is heckling me. And I turn around and tell him, go to heaven. Father so O'Donnell heard go to. And out of his desk he came, told me to get my books and get out. Biggest mistake I ever made in my life. I went to the door and I turned around. He hit me on the right side of my cheek and on the left side. And I'm out in the hall laying on the ground, picking my books up and apologizing to his <laughs> And kept moving around because I didn't want to have a stationary party. So, yeah, so I, I know one of the stories about Father O'Donnell was that he used to be a boxer. So yeah. it sounds like it sounds like you got first hand experience. Oh heck yes, he had to pass his hands. I've ever seen him first. I want to hear about your boxing career, especially, oh, no, especially your especially your guy boxing career. He's not going there. I want to hear about that. I want because I hear you roughed up a few guys. That's all apocryphal. Out. No, that's oh, all apocryphal. <laughs> I've been on your Facebook page. And one of the things I figured out from your Facebook page is that you are really good friends with Santa Claus. Oh yeah. Any dirt you can share about him? I mean, I heard this song hey, once. Hey. I heard this song once about this kid who saw Santa Claus kissing his mom. Does he get ready to kiss a lot of moms? Hey, let me tell you, he's running with the elves. Yeah, I, you gotta watch him now. I believe that. You know, I mean, I I'm wondering if maybe you know when this guy comes in all these homes late at night. I mean. I'm surprised, he, I'm surprised he doesn't kind of get shot. Actually, what I what I have heard is that, you know, just like Clark Kent, it took me a long time to figure this out, because oh, yeah. those glasses got my way, but, you know, just like Clark Kent is Superman, one of the rumors I've heard about you is that you really are Santa Claus. Is, that, is there some truth to that? The last 22 years? Yes. Really? Really. So, how much time have you spent in a Santa Claus? In the last 22 years, I've spent 22 months. And two more years, I have spent two years. The month of December, every year, I started in Santa Claus and I don't get out of it until the last party or place I go to. And if you would like one good story out of the whole month, yeah. everything makes Christmas. I had this little girl on my back. She put her arm around my neck so nobody could hear her. And she whispered, You're not the real Santa Claus, you have a great beard. It been fast on my feet. I said, sweetheart, I said, this beer didn't appear. It's just to take a picture. And I pulled it down. She saw I had another beard under it. Squeezed my neck. Kissed me on the cheek. She said, I love you, Santa Claus. Made my Christmas and her Christmas day. That's a story every year, at least one. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. My favorite memory from high school is Arsenic and Old Lace. That was a play that they took place at the Medical Center Auditorium. And we were all leaving the auditorium and it was dark. And DJ Gio was sweeping the floor on the stage, missing the moon. 
He was really. I didn't know that. I do remember though. I think it was actually one of the lights that Doug Holt was playing one of the lead roles. He was the guy who shows up and of course gets That's killed. Right. And, and Paula. And he broke his ankle. <laughs> the, the day, the afternoon they were moving some uh, stage props or whatever, and he broke his ankle. And so, of course, he was kind of the lead. So, that broke your leg. Well, but they, so they rewrote the, they redid it, and they put him in a wheelchair. <laughs> and so, and, and of course, he got a standing ovation for that. And in fact, I saw, I had never seen her in the before that, but I saw it on TV version, and it wasn't nearly as good. Well, and there was a movie. Yeah, that's what I saw. But it wasn't nearly as good. Do you have any favorite memories from high school? Oh my gosh, I guess my freshman year because it was all so new. I was a cheerleader that year. Yeah. And. Anything else? I mean, anything about the freshman year specific special well, I know that it took me two hours to get to school and two hours to get home every day because I rode the bus. And you rode the bus, the city bus, and you rode down to the second main and uh, transfer to the Pulaski Heights bus and then reverse on the afternoons. So I have to ask you the question I've been asking all the other girls because I'm really curious about this. But I've noticed that a lot of you have changed your last name. And I'm thinking that there must be some sort of mass witness protection program. You're yeah, catching on. Those run, nuns are running a still, right? That's right. Well, cool. I hope it was good. I, I mean, I, I noticed the girls were always kind of happy. So maybe that was on the back of the Was it? Yeah. Oh, good. Well, I'm sorry that I didn't show you I didn't share it. <laughs> Any love, any, any love things you want to tell us about? Yeah, love people. Weren't you in love? I mean, we were all in love. I still y'all. Well, that's true. We. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Sonny was a cool guy. Sonny was a cool guy. See, I knew Sonny all the way from grade school up, and he and I worked at the drugstore at my pharmacy together. Drove to school a lot together and hang out together. So. When I talked to him last time, I was yeah, and so we were, yeah. When we were in high school, you were in a car accident. Um, and it was you and Leo. Who else was in that car accident? Leo. Leo was the driver. Okay. Yes, I remember. Rocky. Myself. Well, I just remember that I, um, I remember running across you after that accident. And I, and I may have the colors sequence wrong, but I remember that. <laughs> I remember the one once when we showed up and you were forget that. <laughs> yeah, well so and I remember your eyes were red and you were wearing a red dress and next time I saw you your eyes were like green in a green dress and they were purple in a purple dress and whatever. And so I asked you that if you were color coordinating your dresses with your eyes and I think you said yes and just spontaneously I said, Well gee, I can hardly wait until they clear up but I, I don't remember that I ever I don't remember what happened after that, but my, whatever fantasy I had I don't think happened. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? I do remember that. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. But I don't remember being clear, okay? <laughs> uh, well, let's see. <laughs> That's just blue. Oh. Is there anything we haven't talked about? We should. Is there anything that we shouldn't have talked about that if we did, people would have fun to listening to? <laughs> but we won't talk about it, okay? <laughs> well, why not? This is the, the, you know, that's the good stuff. This is the stuff nobody, well, I can't talk about that. Okay. Well, thank you very much. No, 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 no. Oh, I don't believe that. I'm going to keep it to myself. I, yeah, I don't blame you there. I, but I know, because I know you're a fun you lady. You know, and I live in New Orleans, so I'm going oh, well. to keep it to myself. Yeah. I have tons of memories of Mel's and Mary's. I met some of those Sister Declan's class and chemistry, and she would say, Now let's go from what we don't know to what we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and did you do that well? <laughs> did you ever blow the lab out? I didn't know the major. So, some of the things you said to Bobby, any of those you want to share here? Okay. We didn't 
hurts and what's wrong with surgery. And when you do heart surgery on a guy or anybody, you know, you kind of strip them because you got to prep all the area and make it sure. sterile. Okay. And so this resident guy, he was on one side of the table when I was in the end. And I was, you know, doing my half of the patient. And he was doing my half of the patient. I was in the store. And I see I had a lot of fond memories, and uh, you know, I have to say, one of one, one of the fondest memories, I guess, that I have. There were like four of us. Uh, one afternoon, decided we'd leave school a little early. Right. Uh, we had about four or five cases of beer. Uh, went up to a place called Nimrod, Arkansas, and decided we'd have one hell of a party for about four days or three days, if I recall. Uh, we were all fishing without licenses, we were drinking, we were 18 or 17, where we were. Got hauled off to the local Nimrod jail uh, and uh, got lectured by the local John Darns. Uh, taught us all a good lesson. Actually, we had a great time until we got back to uh, home and, of course, Monday morning when we went to school, we got a hell of a lot of trouble from, you know, who we thought of tribal. We, I've heard of him. Yeah, well, he, we had uh, we had some some fond memories. Yeah. So what so so what what did the what did the famous uh, Father Tribune have to say to you guys? And what did, I, I'm assuming he well, needed out some kind of punishment. Well, it was Dennis, as I recall, Don Shellabarger, myself, uh, Sonny Wilkerson, and there may have been another one or two. But okay. he, he threw our ass out of school did for, they? for a day or two. Well, until that. well he did until yeah, Mons that. Monsignor Galvin uh, he. Uh, he mediated this deal yeah. after a few uh, calls and visits from the parents. Right. I mean, actually, what business is, was it if uh, Father Tribe used if we had a few beers in Nimrod, Arkansas, is what it boiled down to. Right. But, but hey, this, we all kissed and made up and there wasn't any, yeah. any retribution. So. so, did you catch any fish? You know, I recall we caught a few fish. Wish yeah. we probably had a license, we could have saved some trouble there. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? I recall. My, my wife dated him, okay? But I recall he uh, left school and he went to study to be a Jesuit. And I, thought, I found that very interesting. I didn't know you were that holy, frankly. But that's Well, you know, I, I'm not sure that I was, but I did, you're right, I did go study. Well, I, I went into a Jesuit seminary in July and I left in October, so that tells you how, how dedicated I was. So any favorite high school memories you want to share? Well, I'm not sure, but we did find out that they had this separate that we never knew. Oh, yeah. that was, we never knew that they were going to be one of the nuns. I guess in the last reunion to this other two of them. And she said, of course this is the restroom. And we just said, no, I don't know what but she they did. <laughs> But they had their own, they had their own private party. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They never should have been. My name is Cheryl Garnett Ledger. I went to Holy Souls and all to St. Mary's like everybody else. I didn't go to St. Mary's. No, you didn't, did you? I did not. No, you, were, you went to Catholic. Yeah, good choice. Well, I probably was a good choice. You know, you were there when the famous Father Tribune was there. I was. You know, yeah, infamous, famous, whatever you might want to call it. Yeah, I was there. Those were golden times. Famous. Any, any favorite memories from high school? That we could talk about our initiation to Catholic High. Yeah, what happened during initiation? And we got to sneak around and the seniors uh, tricked us into squeezing bananas in the toilets. And oh my, I think that was supposed to be something else. Huh? That's right, and then they would play like Father Travu was coming and they'd shuffle you out the door. And and all of a sudden it'd all be over and they'd take the next poor sucker and bring him in. <laughs> we all made it through. Huh? That's right, all made it through. 
So, just looking back to high school, any favorite uh, memories that you can share? I'm thinking one's maybe where the statute of limitations is running. Oh, so I was <laughs> <laughs> such a good girl in high school, except for the making out. You know. You made out. Oh God! Every chance I got. Yeah. Every chance I really? got. Yeah, you know, so where was I then? I don't probably make it out with somebody else. You were going to the seminary. Oh, really? I wasn't. I was not, no, I think. No. <laughs> you know, I, it, the, the seminary John thing, that was over. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so any, any favorite high school memories? Yeah, the friends that I made, uh -huh. like Bill Heim, John Blackwell, Tom Belmont, Tony Fifield, oh, David so Bechtel. He knew Jerry. Yeah. That trip we took together. So Washington. let's talk about that trip. Now you and I yeah. went on a trip to Seattle. World's uh, Fair. World's Fair. Camped out for three weeks. Yeah, was it three weeks? I think it was three weeks. Okay, three, four weeks. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. we. I remember we stopped in Yellowstone, and we camped out a couple nights in Yellowstone. Yes. And I remember, I think it was the first night we were there, somebody came over the next morning and told us that a bear had slept just a few feet behind our tent. It did. It did, because I remember something moving behind our tent. Yeah. And we didn't move. Yeah, do you remember you and I? Uh, we went with you know, your uncle, right, Father Tom? Yeah, Keller. Father. Yeah. He, it was his car, and yeah. uh, and he had a bow and arrow. And we, yeah. you and I, stood on the shores of Lake Yellowstone and tried to use that bow and arrow to get a, a trout, which is probably illegal as all get out. It was a cutthroat trout. But we, yeah. but we tried and tried and tried. And that thing about as easy as shooting fish in a rain barrel, yeah. it BS. It it was, I don't know how long we tried, but we never did get one. Never did, did. never did. But I remember as we were trying, somebody drove by in a car and he says, what you boys are doing is really illegal. You could go to jail. But we didn't care because we were still trying to do it. We were still 17 well, years old. Well, we're too, yeah, we're too young to know better. Yeah. And it, yeah. it didn't matter because we didn't get one anyway. So. That's true. That's um, true. Any other memories? That you, any, any, either from that trip or any other high school memories? Well, the trip to Seattle, especially when we got to the World's Fair, was, was really spectacular. Yeah. Especially the, uh, the Space Needle. Yeah. You know, because it is still there. It's still I know a it's landmark. Still, I know it is. Yeah. And, that, that was a memory that I'll never I'll never forget. And then, you know, all of our high school fun parties, you know, just being with great friends. Yeah. Any stories that the, anything, any incidents where, you know, like maybe the statute of limitations has run out so that they couldn't do anything to you? Yeah, but, we used to uh, climb in the car trunks and sneak in the Asher and the Razorback driving. Oh my goodness. I know it, and we'd have one guy driving and he'd pay for his one ticket. He'd drive all the way to the back. And we would come out of the trunk one at a time. Yeah. And one time we only could get five of us in the trunk, and there was two up front, and one of them was John Blackwood. And they paid for their ticket. And it was, as John Hendricks was getting ready to drive off, Blackwell said, how much for the guys in the trunk? <laughs> and we just froze. I mean, we literally just froze. And the guy taking the money and the ticket says, he says, oh, get out of here, man. You know, he didn't believe me. Right. And we just died. I mean, we couldn't hold our laughter. So do you have a record for how many you got in the trunk? You said you could use we had five. As, we had as many as seven. Really? Yeah. Holy cow. And, uh, is, is this, I hope and nobody farted. What, well, John Blackwell did. Oh, did he? Yeah. That, right, that right sounds the, like John. Right when we pulled up to the to pay, the yeah. one guy to pay, there were seven of us, and we were scrammed in there. And Blackwell says, you're going to like this. And he cut loose there. <laughs> And I thought by the time we got the trunk open, we were all of it. Yeah. It was horrible. It was horrible. I bet. Well, but I think that's Anyway, different. John was great. You know, yeah, he's, he, was. he was a great guy. Okay. Uh, all right, Jerry. Thank Appreciate you, it, man. It's always good to see yeah, you. Okay. And, you know, wait a minute now. You and, okay. I, you and I got a deal. That's right, we do. You said that we will be here for our next 50. Uh oh. You know what? And I have, I have made. Uh, hold on, let these guys go by. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I want you to know, now I, as you know, I have made my commitment to come to these. This is my first one, right. and I have made a commitment to come every 50 years. And do you know that right. so far, you are the only guy that I have found who will match my commitment, including all these women who claim us, you know, who accuse us men of not being willing to stand up commitment. Well, they won't make a commitment, but you and I are the only ones that made the commitment right. to be. So we're going to be here. 50 years now. You can see it. It's on, it's yeah. on tape. I tell yeah. you what, all of you, anybody watching this, yeah. you can check up on this.
That's right. 50 Absolutely. years. Great. Thanks, Jerry. You bet. It's great. Thank Tell you. us your name. Oh, yeah. So oh, you were yeah. Patricia Finley. Yeah. I was Patricia Finley. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, how did you come to become a friend? Was it a good? Was it a good job? I said, how did you come to become a farmer? And was it a good job for you? Yes. Was it? Yes. I met my husband in Catholic Where? In Catholic Singles. Oh yeah. So he was a farmer. I see a horse. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't a farmer. Was no, him? no, he wasn't a farmer. Farmer. Well, then he was misrepresenting who he was. Any high, favorite high school memories you want to share with us? Let me just the place we were in and the things we did together. Just the friendship of the girls in our class. And you said you were a rock at? Yes. At Radio Central? Our radio no, city? No, it's St. Mary's. They had rockets. They had, those, they had people at St. Mary's kicking their legs up and doing all that? I didn't know about that. I missed that. Oh, really? Well, I missed that. Well, I wish I hadn't. I, mean, I feel like uh, you know that would have been. You were there too. So have you been to a lot of these reunions? I think I've been to all but one. Really? And you missed that one because didn't I? I don't remember. And how does this one compare to the others so far? So far, it's wonderful. Yeah. Because yeah. there's so many more people. Yeah. Regina Bishop, Mary Regina Bishop. If you're looking at the credits. Okay. And you, but you don't travel on that anymore. You go under no. an alias, right? <laughs> I married a very wonderful man by the name of John Armstrong, and so now I'm Armstrong, and my I got shortened down to a nickname of Gene. So I am Gene Armstrong to everybody who knows me down in Louisiana. Okay, so that's where you're hiding out. That's where I'm hiding out is in Baton Rouge. Yeah. So. Now, if you want to know the inside story, sure I do. You guys have been talking to all the day students, sure, and right. you've been talking to the Catholic high guys, right. but you all didn't talk to the borders. So talk to us about the borders. I, I always figured y'all were up to something. Oh, we were. What were we, we were. up to? We had everything. Well, if you ever saw the movie, uh, Where Angels Fear to Tread, that's our story. Okay, so tell us okay. about it. Well, uh, we gave tours. When the nuns were at Vesters, Vespers, mm -hmm. we used to give tours to the convent. So the other the boarders could see that nuns really were human, yeah. and they actually lived in normal, you know, places. Yeah. And um, I was sacristan of the chapel for four years that I was in high school. And I can tell you that altar wine doesn't taste a, a thing like good wine. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just barely passable. Yeah. But it's whatever Monsignor Keeney and, and Monsignor Murray liked. Okay. Well, I do have a question about that. Yeah, you just brought a point that these, you know, these nuns. I always thought these nuns were up to something that they weren't telling us about. And the reason I always thought that is that I have noticed that over the years that a whole bunch of people from uh, Mount St. Mary's have changed their last names. And I'm wondering if there's not some sort of mass witness protection program that's led them to change Yeah, their names. it's called matrimony. Well, but you're saying because they got married? Yes. Well, this guy's got married. We didn't change our names. <laughs> <laughs> no, that just my name lent itself to so, some very terrible, um, what would you say? Um, it's not interpretations, it's pronunciations. Yeah, okay. And so I kept getting shortened okay. to Gina, and then I became a professional headhunter, and Gina was just not conducive to headhunting. Gotcha. And so it became Gene. Okay, so okay. so they weren't running a still or anything over there. You well, said they were. <laughs> you said they were doing this. You said you were taking these tours. I mean, I'm thinking that y'all found something there that you're not sharing here with us. No, they they were living a normal nunnily life, but but we had um, we had a very interesting life. We were living almost a semi nun life. Okay. But we, it was like we had 27 little mothers. It was, it was generally a very loving environment to be in. Um, I was very fortunate to be a boarder at Mount St. Mary's, uh, although the nuns at times thought I was, especially the Newfoundland nuns, thought I was uh, the devil incarnate, okay? For example, they made me junior fire marshal, and we always had fire drills over at the school. Right? But we had um, 81 boarders, and we had 27 nuns, some of them that were uh, prehistoric vintage. 
and it dawned on me we had never had a night fire drill. No. So, wow. oh, now you just can see what's coming. Yeah, let's hear this. Okay, one thirty in the morning, I'm a sophomore in high school. Right. With my almighty authority, I don't have to tell anybody. Okay. All I have to do is ring the fire alarm. Oh. It spilled. 81 borders and 27 nuns out, and I thought I was going to get roasted right there on the driveway. Well, I, did those nuns wait and put on their habits, or did they come out? They came out in house coats, and they got on the coif and gimp. Well, they got on the coif. They never put on the gimp. But they got on their house coats and everything and came out. And the only the person who actually saved my life was the chief of police of Little Rock, who, thank God, uh, spoke up and said that he had been worried about this for many, many years and uh, wasn't sure how to approach it, but he was to the point he was about to demand it in the mirror. Well, good for him. But, you know, I have a I have my own fire marshal story, not nearly as interesting as yours, but when I was at St. Andrews, and I was probably about the sixth or seventh grade, mm -hmm. and uh, we were named fire marshals, you know, and it was kind of, I felt like it's supposed to be an honor. And I remember we were given this little checklist to go around and check, for, you know, things that are safe or not. Well, we thought we were supposed to really fill it out, so we went around and we found these oily rags in this little storage <laughs> closet or the stairway. So we marked that down. And you know, um, I don't think we were asking the fire marshals after that because that report got redone, and I, we were made, it was pretty clear to us that we were not supposed to fill it. <laughs> well, uh, believe me, if it hadn't been for the fire marshal, Sister Declan and Sister Ida, um, they would have had roasted me alive. Um, other things that we did that the day students never saw is the boarders had hood nannies, we had marshmallow roast. Um, it was just one huge family-like atmosphere of having like all these sisters. And we had a special relationship with the nuns. For example, on Mercy Day, the nuns would actually put out white tablecloths in the dining room and they would serve us um, instead of going through the cafeteria line. And then afterwards, we would go upstairs while they were in the refectory, and we would uh, put everything together, and we had a play that we did especially for them, using every student wow. that was a boarder. Cool. And so we had this really special relationship with them. We could be loving and otherwise. Now, stories. The night of graduation, they would not let us sing our alma mater. Why is it? Because they were afraid we're all going to cry on the stage. Remember this, Maureen? And the curtains came, closed, and not a person, nobody here said anything. We just stood there, and simultaneously, we started singing the Bells of St. Mary's. Well, my best friend, Eileen Whitting, who's not with us tonight, but Eileen Whitting was a person who detested emotional outbursts. She slips out and goes up and does something that every class has always threatened to do. Which is? She rang the Angel, well, she, she, didn't, she told the Angelus bell. And it was told to me because I heard it. She didn't ring it. There's a difference between a ringing and a tolling. Okay. Okay. And she pulled down the cord and she literally was lifted up by the cord. I understand she looked like one gigantic marshmallow in her white evening gown going up and down on the bell. And it tolled at 10 o'clock at night and just rolled across the hills of Little Rock. Bishop Fletcher was coming up the driveway. The nuns were freaking out, okay? Right. They were just humiliated. And Bishop Fletcher was so cool. He said, you know, this is so appropriate. The, be the ending of one life beginning of another. Cool. Is that tell, how you, tell them how you were always worried that you were, you had failed every test. This is our A-plus student. And she would freak out every time she had just <laughs> blown the test. Okay, so tell us your name, and Maureen, did. and then she she any stories you have. I want to hear that one. Okay, so let's come over here. Okay, so okay. tell us your name. And look at that camera, because I, okay, so. Okay. Oh gosh, I'm going to laugh. Maureen Moix Elms. And the class of 62, can't believe it's 50 years. You know, and it's I'm interesting, a coincidence, that almost everybody I've talked to tonight graduated in 1962. I'm, I'm not sure you. why that is, but anyway, that's cool. I'm yeah. just kidding. Okay, so anyway, so tell so I'm, I interrupted your story. Oh, uh, well, like, um, like Jean said, 
No, 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 no. I don't, I don't know how this will get edited. I don't know how this will get edited. It's also like Jean said, just tell me stories. Okay. Um, are you going to edit this? Yes, I am. Okay, good, good. Okay. Well, uh, St. Mary's, I learned a whole, whole lot that's, uh, you know, stood me well for everything right. I do today right. and have done. And so I'm very grateful for that. But at the time, I went and I worried about all the tests because the nuns were really strict. But I did learn an awful lot. And you were an A student? Well, I was salutatorian of and the you, class. And you worried about your tests? Yes. Okay. And I did get to be the salutatorian, which well, good for you. Good. Yeah. So and, you were smart. Uh, so. Um, Yes, it seems so, yeah. but I worked hard for so, it. So, so any deep, dark secrets that you could share with us? That, I mean, nothing that's going to get anybody in any trouble. But any... Well, someone just told me tonight something I didn't remember that I did. Which was? You know? I went, well, in the, in the freshman year, they said we, uh, some people were going on trips, like right. uh, one girl was going to Ireland and somebody else was going to Switzerland and all. And uh, so I, it was my turn. And, I wasn't going anywhere, so I said, I was going to Timbuktu. Oh my. Because I didn't know what else to say. Well, if I'd have known what I know now, I would have told them I was going to Cartagena. Oh. So, because that was being more sure. exotic. And I did go to Cartagena. It was one was of my it? favorite places. Oh, it was great. I never thought in my whole life I would go to someplace so exotic. Hello. <laughs> We're on. I We're on. I have no lipstick on. No, but he's got the damn thing turned on. It's me. Wait a minute now, you and, okay. I, you and I got a deal. That's right, we do. You said that we will be here for our next 50. Uh oh. You know what? And I have, I have made. Well, hold on, let these guys go by. They, yeah. Everybody got to care. I, 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 I want you to know. Now, I, as you know, I have made my commitment to come to these. This is my first one, right. and I have made a commitment to come every 50 years. And do you know that right. so far, you are the only guy that I have found who will match my commitment, right. including all these women who claim us, you know, who accuse us men of not being willing to stand up commitment. Well, they won't make a commitment, but you and I are the only ones that made the commitment right. to be. So be we're going to be here. 50 years now. You can see it. It's on, it's yeah. on tape. I tell yeah. you what, all of you, anybody watching this, yeah. you can check up on this. That's right. 50 Absolutely. years.